Hey guys and welcome back to the GWP Homestead. I'm Megan and today we are going to talk about my dairy goats and we're going to talk about five things you should know before you get dairy goats. So there's a lot of things to know before you get goats in general but these are five specific things to dairy goats. So one, number one is daily milking. There is a huge commitment with any type of dairy animal. You have to milk them daily. You can do once a day milking and do twice a day milking. You can milk while the kids are on them or you can wait till the kids are weaned, but they need a schedule. So what we do here is we kid share. So after a couple weeks of the mom and the kids being together 24 hours, I'll separate them at night. They're in the same stall still. We just put the kids in the kidding stall and the moms and they can all see each other but the babies can't nurse through the night. I, we keep them separated for up to 12 hours. I milk them first thing in the morning and then they are with mom all day and then we separate at night. You don't want to go any longer than 12 hours because it's not healthy. It's not as good for the babies. That's what we do here. Some people will wait and milk. If their goat has a really good supply they'll just leave the kids with them 24 hours a day and milk them when they can. We do once a day milking, which means I milk first thing in the morning. Some people do twice a day milking, and that's mostly if you don't have kids on them. So you would milk them early in the morning, and then you'd come in about 12 hours later, so you have about a 12 hour fill on that udder, and milk again. For me, personally, with the three kids and all the other stuff we're doing here, it'd be really hard on us. So we just do once a day milking, and that's worked really well for us so far. Now, I'm only milking two goats two dosed currently so it takes me less than 20 minutes to milk both of them neither one of them are a huge supplier so it does it works really well for us number two dairy goats kind of need a very specific diet for multiple reasons one being their condition you want them to keep a good condition so you can rebreed them at a good time their milk tastes better when they have a good diet they're going to be less prone to issues if they're in, got a good diet and good condition and all this all of it adds up together when we first got our very first dairy goat, we brought her home. We noticed the milk was what a lot of people call goaty, and you can kind of tell the difference between what the goat milk tastes like and what the cow, what cow's milk tastes like, which is what most people drink as far as drinking animal milk. This time around, we haven't had that issue. It tastes just like regular cow, regular cow milk, and I think that has to do with one: my goats aren't stressed. The when I brought the first goat home, she was in milk. We stressed her out. She wasn't producing a ton and it just wasn't a good situation at that moment. It was just stressful. She was in a new home, a new environment, new things. It was stressful for her for a little bit. Now we're good. We're also on a very good diet. I've changed the brand of feed I was using that is formulated for dairy goats. It has a higher protein, so they're getting a plenty of protein and not losing condition. We also feed fermented, fermented, cha, or fermented alfalfa hay. We use chaff hay specifically, and that's really good. Get some digesting stuff, it's great product. The diet definitely improved the milk now that they're not, now that they're used to being here. Third thing you need to know when bringing home dairy goats, like any type of animal or mammal, a goat, a cow, a human, a dog, a cat, any type of mammal has to have a baby or babies to go into milk. If you want milk from your dairy animal, you have to breed them. And with that comes a responsibility to the babies. It means you have to have a plan for the babies as far as rehoming, how you're going to rehome them, where you're going to try to sell them, if you're going to raise them and process them. There's a lot of options, but you have that responsibility to make sure you know what to do with the babies once they're here. You know. We sell our, we've sold all our boys basically to this point, except for keeping some weathers to make sure we have a friend for all our goats. We've retained all the girls we've had because we're building our herd. And then probably next year we'll sell selling both. Maybe, maybe I keep one, maybe I don't. I don't know yet, but we have a plan. Now, also comes the responsibility of what happens if you get a baby that comes out deformed and isn't gonna have a good quality of life? You have to be prepared to make those decisions to call. And it's not easy, it's not fun. No one wants to look at a tiny baby goat and be like, it's suffering, we need to call it. It's not fun. But 
as becoming a stewardess of your animals, you have to make those decisions. You've got to be prepared for those things. So that's something to be aware of. You also have to be prepared for stillborns. <laughs> it's not fun. It's sad. It sucks. I've had two now born on the farm. And it sucked. But we knew that was a possibility that could happen. So we were prepared. We got rid of the babies. We buried them. That was all there was to it. This year when Brandy kitted, she um, had a prolapse uterus. So we had to be responsible for taking care of that, whether it meant if she was gonna have to be cold, but we were, you know, obviously we were able to save her. We took her to the vet and got her fixed up, but that was an expense that wasn't really accounted for. So we had to be prepared to do that. Like there wasn't a question. As soon as I realized what was going on, it's let's get the vet on the phone, let's go. You gotta be prepared. There's also the possibility of a baby not thriving. So you gotta be prepared to deal with that. How are you gonna treat it? Are you going to just leave well enough alone? Are you going to do everything you can? That's what we do here, is we just do everything we can, and then sometimes it's not enough. Had that happen this year. It wasn't a great kidding season for us this year. We got through it, and we've got some gorgeous, healthy babies now, but it was still a hard season. And that was just something we knew getting these animals was something we were gonna have to deal with at some point, and that was this year. Number four, one thing I get asked a lot from other people that have goats is, where do you go to the vet hat? Because what I've learned is a lot of vets don't, for one, don't do large animals. Two, a lot of large animal vets don't want to deal with goats. So what do you do? Well, I've been lucky and found a vet that I like and I trust and has helped me. You know, obviously we took Brandy to the vet. They fixed her up. We had another issue, took her back. They fixed her up again and it was great. But not everyone's that lucky in their area. And even with having a vet that I trust, they don't deal with goats a lot. So one thing I've learned is as much as it is finding a vet you trust and relying on them, it's also doing your own research and advocating for your animals and your situation. And that's not easy. So something to be aware of when getting any type of animal is making sure you can find a vet and being willing to possibly travel for them. I know two vets in our area that will handle goats right now. One of them I see, one of them um, another friend sees. Both of them are about an hour drive from where I'm at. So that's something you gotta be prepared for is possibly traveling for a vet. That's why a lot of people who do goats handle as much on their farm as they can. They just butt on their farm, they vaccinate on their farm, they treat pneumonia on their farm. That's a lot of farmers in general. We're no exception. I keep meds on hand for pneumonia. I keep pain meds on hand in case there's like, oh, she's kind of swollen. Let's see what's going on for a couple days, like that kind of stuff. I do go to the vet to this bud because that's just easier on us right now with all the kids and stuff like that. Sometimes it's hard to get me and Reagan both out here at the same time to work on a goat like that. I can vaccinate without his help for the most part. It's nice when he's down here helping, but sometimes I'm doing it by myself. I can't disbud by myself because probably 50% of a good disbudding job is having someone to hold them and hold them still so you don't mess it up. So finding a vet can be an issue. Try to maybe find one and make some phone calls before before you bring the first goat even home. Number five, depending on how you set up your breeding, there may be a time during the year where you don't have milk from your animals because you need to dry them off for their health, for their pregnancy health, for maybe even your health because sometimes you get overwhelmed. Um, when we first brought Brandy home, I was milking her and we were struggling. She wasn't producing a lot. It didn't taste real great to drink. And so I kind of made the decision for mine and her relationship to continue building as well as myself to dry her off kind of early and didn't milk her as long as I could have. And we're about to do that now. Brandy's not producing a ton and Violet is coming to the end of her lactation. So lactation works on a curve. It increases and it peaks and then it slacks off. It's pretty simple. And she's getting on that downhill slope, which is fine. I expected it. I was hoping Brandy would kind of fill in those gaps, but Dairy animals have the ability to hold up their milk. They don't have to do give you letdown. And a lot of dairy animals who have babies on them won't let down all their milk. That's what they're supposed to do, especially when you're kid sharing. I could pull my baby, but I don't want to pull her because she I'm retaining her. So I want her to grow as big and as healthy and as wonderful as possible. So keeping her on Brandy's the best decision as far as for the future. That means I'm gonna dry them both off and they're gonna get time to rest before we breed 
and then they'll get bred and then they'll be dry all during their pregnancy. A lot of people milk three months into their, their dose pregnancy. So they'll breed them and continue milking until about eight weeks before they kid. Then they'll dry them off. They're dry for about eight weeks, which is perfectly fine for some does. Some does thrive on that. Some don't. A lot of Nigerians, because they've already got a, low produc a lower production than a full-size goat, don't do as hot with that. We're making the decision to go ahead and dry them off. We're going to breed a group in November, I think. I think it's kind of what I'm thinking. We're going to breed three more in November. And eventually, our goal is to have two groups. So then, first group kids, we milk, dry them off right as the second group kids, or right as we're ready to start milking that second group. And that way I'm in milk year round is our plan. Right now it's not like that. So we will have a period during this year where we have no milk coming in. And so that's something to be aware of. Do you want to immediately be like, okay, we're gonna bring in two does at this time of year that are in milk, then we'll bring in two more later. Do we wanna automatically stagger them as we're bringing them in, or how do you wanna do it? But be prepared to mo most likely have a month, two months, some period of time where you have no milk from your dairy animals. And it's okay because you need to be a good stewardess of that animal. And part of that is making sure they're keeping condition and they're healthy and they're happy and they're thriving. So sometimes that means not having milk. And it's not fun. Like it sucks when you've been relying on that. My kids love their goat milk in the mornings. So they're gonna be pretty sad when there isn't any. They actually like chocolate goat milk. <laughs> Never dreamed my kids would be drinking chocolate goat milk, but that's where we're at. Be prepared. Know that's something you may face. If y'all have any questions about dairy goats that I may know the answer to, leave them in the comments and if we get enough of them maybe we'll do another video. If not, I'll just reply in the comments. But I think that's all I got for y'all guys. We'll see you on the next video. I'm Megan from the GWP Homestead. Bye! Mm -hmm.